gun Ramos looking like he's got one more good run Sips a little shaky But his heart is still true Oh how that dog loves hunting with me and you Sporting dog adventures run Everything you need is here under the sun Sporting Dog Adventures podcast is proudly brought to you by Saki Acres Retrievers. My name is Jeff Fuller. I've been breeding dogs for over 20 years and it is my passion. We love putting best friends in people's homes and selling them that dream. That dream of riding the truck next to you, running around the field on a hunt, or just being a best friend at your house. If you're looking for a high quality Labrador Retriever puppy, please check our website out as www.sagiacres.com or you can call me at 262-215-9683 or email me sportingdogtv at gmail.com. Remember, whether it's yellow, black, or chocolate, everyone deserves a Saki dog. Here at the Sporting Dog Adventures podcast, we are all about the dogs. As our listeners, we want to thank you all for listening. We want to ask you a favor. Please give us a five-star rating. Give us a thumbs up. Share us with your friends. If you can't support us financially, go to Anchor Support and support us there. We are only as strong as our fans and your help that you give us where we are going to spread our love for dogs and dogs in the field. Please share it to your friends and family. Please help us grow. Thank you again so much for listening to us. God bless. Welcome to the Sporting Dog Adventures Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Fuller, and I have a special guest, my beautiful wife, Kate Fuller. Hello. So what we thought we'd do is do a holiday buying guide for everyone that still has shopping to do. I know a lot of people have it done, but this is a year-long buying guide you could use anytime. But what the heck, we'll do it when people are buying gifts. So, Kate, I thought first, in the first segment, we would talk about buying stuff for your dog. In the second segment, we are going to talk about gear for hunting for people. And then in the third part, I wanted to talk about how to have a healthy relationship and detail, I guess, the leash that you give me for going out and enjoying the outdoors. So let's start with the dogs. What are some great options for buying for your dog for Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever birthday. holiday you're looking at or whatever <laughs> birthday. birthday, what would you suggest? Uh, we're calling it a holiday buying guide, but of course, like you said, it's it's good year round. These aren't holiday specific gifts by any means. We get asked a lot by clients when they buy new puppies, what are good items to have in the house? And my answers are pretty much the same, so that's kind of what we'll go through here. I would say the number one toy, if you will, that we suggest, um, particularly for Labrador Retrievers, maybe not so much for some other breeds, are those white sterilized cow femur bones. It's it's an actual bone. Um, what would you say, maybe 10 inches long or so? About that. About 10 inches. And they're hollow on the inside. And usually when you buy them, they're filled with a flavoring or something of that nature. Sometimes they're completely empty, but they are hands down the most durable wonderful thing i have found for high powered chewers they don't destroy them i usually end up throwing them away when they start to look disgusting um i'll actually refill them with a bit of um canned pumpkin and put them in the freezer we've used banana as well i have the pumpkin i used baby baby food banana baby food um the pumpkin has a little bit better uh, consistency for that, but you could you could use a different thing. I choose the pumpkin, I choose the banana and things like that because it's plant fiber, so it's not adding a bunch of extra fat and calories to your dog's diet. And then you're not just sticking that in there and then giving it to the dog. You, no, you I freeze actually, it. You freeze it. Yep, we freeze so it. So what Kate will do is she'll take, what, usually like six bones, fill them, <laughs> yep. and then put them in the freezer, and then when it's a puppy that is just on a tear and chewing, you can give it to the puppy, or yep. with our adult dogs... When they want a treat or we want to give them a treat or just give them something to occupy them, they get a bone. 
Yep. It, to them, it's new. They don't realize it's the same bone they've had. And like I said, they'll literally last in this cycle of, you know, buying a new one. They finish the inside out. They get a little bored with it. I refill it. I freeze it. I bring it back out. And we keep doing this for probably about two years before I'm finally like, okay, that's gross. These are just gross. And then I'll throw it away and buy a new one. But um, Bentley's makes them. That's Bentley with a B, B like boy. Um, Red Barn makes them. Um, we're not sponsored by any of these companies. It's just honestly what I have found on the market. They probably are between 8 and $10 a piece, but they are worth every single penny. Um, they're just great. They really hold up. So that's always my first recommendation. Uh, second would be, if you're looking for something that's more of a toy and less of a chew, would be a, those fire hose toys. Um, it's made with like almost like a canvas. Yep. Yep. I assume they call it fire hose fabric because there is some correlation to products in the industry that use this super durable material, but I don't know. Um, but they make all kinds of little cute creatures. You know, we've had a snake, we've had a fox, we've had... With that said, it usually says that they're indestructible. If you have a Labrador Retriever, <laughs> nothing is indestructible. No, they will get pieces of them off. So again, as we always tell people, always supervise, supervise play, very important. Because they do have squeakers in them, and as we all know, it's every lab's mission in life to destroy every squeaker out there. Um, but of all the toys we've tried, those have been the most durable. And they're not even as pricey as some of the other toys, but we have found that they do last longer. They do. It's, uh, it, it's something that... I mean, we've only had dogs that destroyed them within a couple of weeks. We've had a couple of special dogs that are able to destroy just about anything. But generally speaking, eh, those toys probably make it a good month or two. Yeah, and we keep them around even after they've lost a head or a limb or this or that. And I'd say it's probably a year to two when I'm finally like, okay, this is either a safety problem or it's gross or whatever. And then we finally throw them away. I know there was one that we had that actually it was like a fire hosed so a heavy canvas in the outside, you could stick a water bottle in it yes. so the dog could make the crunchy sound. And yes. that was that was neat. I, the dog just it. had it out the other yep. day. And I thought, oh, we got to stick, stick another bottle in there. Mm-hmm. But the one thing I will tell you, don't teach your dogs to pick up your water bottle or your soda bottle. I started mine doing that, thinking it was neat, and then ended up without sodas and water <laughs> while I was trying to watch TV where they were taking it from me. So yeah, or they that, put a hole in it. <laughs> the, the whole fetch... And hold with a soda bottle or water bottle turns into a fun game for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they either abscond with it or like Scarlett has put a hole with her tooth in them. And that's really bad news, especially if it's a brand new one. It's a mess. Now, as far as treats, do you have any treats that you like to do other than the bone? We don't do treats. I mean, I, I'm sure people think we're the biggest bore in the whole world. But I just, I can't stress to people enough that that's a way of introducing allergens and extra fat and calories into your dog's diet. So particularly if you are worried about allergies or if your dog has an allergy, I'm all for the, you know, keep their diet as controlled as possible. If they're eating, you know, whatever it is, Nutro and it's a chicken formula and that's what you like and they seem to do well, don't go for Christmas and buy them a bully stick or a duck foot or something like that and introduce this foreign protein into their diets. And especially the lower end products, um, you know, where you know it's a bunch of yucky fillers in it and stuff like that. Um, Those femur bones I was talking about, they do come with different fillings, lamb, peanut butter, cheese, whatever. And they're not really eating it per se. It's taking them hours and days to just kind of lick down the inside of it. So that's probably a much better choice in my opinion. Now I thought of something that is really fun that we have and that's with the thought process of giving them their own dog food as a treat, the wobble toy that they can knock it over and it puts one piece of food out at a time. And what'll happen is you you can actually get the dogs to completely rearrange your entire living room with this toy. It's a free interior decorating tool. It's a red sand weighted on the bottom, bobbly type of toy. You unscrew the top. It's by Kong. It's red. I think they're all red. Um, and you can measure out your dog's meal and put it in there, screw the top back on, and it's got a little hole in it. And so it's kind of like a weeble, like, like when we were kids, those little toys. You, you bat it around, you smack it, and it dispenses a little piece of kibble. We only use them on very rare occasions in our living room, which our living room is essentially unused. So we're talking no glass, no end tables, no furniture, no cords, no lamps, because, yes, it's a free rearranging tool. It's basically for entertainment for the humans. Oh, yes. 
Oh, yeah. Especially if you have, like we do in our house, where you have three, four labs that oh. are competing for this. It turns into a complete and total Donnybrook with this poor <laughs> toy getting flopped over and thrown and people trying to pick it up and oh, couches yeah. getting moved and yeah. tables knocked over. and Scarlet finally gets ticked off and just picks the thing up in her face and wanders off with it and starts chewing on it like a chew toy. So it's like, okay, game's over, you know. But, yeah, they think it's... Super great fun. So if you have maybe a basement or a rec room or something like that, that that doesn't have anything sharp or valuable, might also be an option. So one other thing I wanted to talk about, we've got our beautiful DCT kennels. And inside those, we have dog beds. We do. We are dog bed connoisseurs, or you could call (laughs) us dog bed snobs. We are. um, Yeah, our DCT, DCT kennels, like the greatest gift you've ever given me. They're wonderful. And that... Then we have this beautiful piece of furniture that goes with everything in our house, and we put a dog bed in it. So what kind of a dog bed would you suggest? Yep, obviously the kennel doesn't come with a dog bed. Um, And like he said, we've gone through, gosh, I don't even know, probably 30 dog beds in just a few years' time. Um, As far as recommendations for a dog bed, I don't have a recommendation of a particular brand, but I can tell you a couple features to look for. And the first thing would be it absolutely needs to have a removable, washable cover. Um, Accidents happen, but even past accidents, if you're like, oh, my dog would never, you know, pee or vomit on this bed. Well, first of all, you don't know that. But second, dogs, I mean, come on, they kind of, it smells. It's a soft surface. It absorbs scent after a while. So you absolutely want to have something with a zipper, removable, washable cover. And then kind of in the same vein, take a look at it when it's in the store. Go ahead and unzip it a little bit and see what's inside. You know, I've seen some just bizarre, you know, mattressy type cushions on the inside, which are going to get destroyed, which are not washable. Um, One was like a plastic bag and it was full of like recycled shredded foam. I mean, that's not washable. And the minute the dog digs too aggressively on the bed, it's going to put a hole in that bag on the inside. So that was a poor choice. I'm a big fan of the ones that look like the egg crates. They sell them under the pretense of them being ergonomic or um, orthopedic or whatever. Those are really nice because they are generally washable if you do it on a gentle cycle. And I also will take them out and... um, I'll spray them down with just like a Lysol spray just to get some of the the dog scent off of it or, you know, knock down the germs or whatever. And then the covers are washable. So my suggestion, number one, look for a removable washable cover. Number two, check out what's on the inside and make sure that the inside is also, you know, sturdy, washable, durable, things like that. So that is going to give you some good ideas for the next month or two. We'll try to do one of these every couple, a couple of times a year. Next, I wanted to talk about what you can look for for the hunter in your family for gear when you're out in the woods, out in the marsh, whatever your quarry is, wherever you're at, some good quality ideas for gear in our next segment coming up after this. For the last 10 years, I've bought all my vehicles from the Boucher Automotive Group in Janesville. If you want to get a great Ram truck or a great Ford truck, my son actually bought a used Chevy truck from them. They have fair prices, they have a knowledgeable, honest staff, and they really stand behind their products. You can go on their websites, frankbouchercrysler.net or gordyboucherford.com and find out the inventory they have. Again. I know everyone's saying that it's so hard to find a vehicle. We've bought three vehicles this year during a time that, quote unquote, you can't find them. They have what you need, and they're a great company to work with. Check out Boucher. They ride with you every mile. If you're a serious person about the outdoors, or you love shooting, or you just want a great hobby, or all of the above, you need to check out Mech Outdoors. From their shot shell and metallic reloading to their clay target machines, you will get a quality product that will give you so much more enthusiasm about your participation in the outdoors and also a great hobby that you can do with the whole family. Check out mechoutdoors.com for more. Welcome back to the show. So we covered the four-legged 
person in the house. Now I wanted to cover the two-legged person in the outdoors and some different ideas of things that you can get. And I will tell you the first thing I am a huge proponent of is, and again, these are unsponsored things. This is what I use, Milwaukee heated vests or coats. What a cool thing. When I was a kid, I always remember being cold, really, really, really cold. Deer hunting, we would never sit probably past about 930 because you just didn't have the clothing. And now I'm old and I just smile every time I get cold when I can just reach in, push a button and turn on my coat. And I will, I will say with a straight face, I usually wear a vest and a coat if I'm sitting all day. So I have two layers of warmth. It makes hunting so much more enjoyable. I would say not only for you as an experienced hunter who's tried a lot of the other things, but I think that's a great gift for the new hunter. Like you said, you want the experience to be enjoyable. You want them to be warm. Nothing ruins a nice day faster than being too cold. Think about it for like the new hunter in your life. If you're trying to get someone involved in the sport, um, wife, girlfriend, child, whoever, husband, boyfriend, and if it doesn't work out, these aren't hunting specific pieces per se that oh, you I use mine year round. Yeah, you can wear it anywhere. They do have certain pieces that come with a camo pattern, but the vast majority of their products are either red or black or gray. So it's not like you're gonna look out of place if you're like, hey, it really didn't work out. I don't really enjoy deer hunting or duck hunting or whatever it is. You could still wear it to work. They're very nice looking pieces. Yeah, I have a I have a vest and a hard shell coat here at home. And then my camel coat is up at the uh, at our hunting property, at our shack. And I use them year round. I, I am so done with being cold in my life. I, I mean, it is something that I always tell people, I'm like, listen, first thing you buy, make sure you have really, really warm boots or waders. Second thing, really warm uh, gear for your hands. But this is a must. And the nice part is I use a vest for when I'm waterfall hunting because it's not as bulky and works well in waders. And then I can put my gear over that. And then for for anything else that I'm hunting, I'll use a coat and a vest. Mm -hmm. They also make heated gloves now. We um, we think those are pretty cool. Uh, what else? Um... There's Now, there's other companies out there. I know oh, we've had yes. several of the, I guess, off-brands. Yeah. They're not an off-brand because they're highly, high, highly advertised. But the problem that I had was the battery life on them is like 30 minutes, and then they just weren't durable. They weren't. Um, you had bought me a vest, and it lasted not an entire year. So from one winter to the next, I don't know what happened. I think it was something with the wiring, maybe the wiring with the little battery pack that's in the pocket. Something went, but I would say, in our experience, you know, don't. Don't buy an off-brand. We honestly have had the best luck with the Milwaukee Tool ones. And again, not sponsored. We don't get anything from them. But. And there's other, some of the other, I guess, trades type uh, companies. Uh, I know DeWalt's got, got some brands. I don't know what they have or what the durability is. But at least when you have something that you have people that are using out in the field, it's going to have to have a higher durability and a higher quality to it. Because if you got guys that are working outside, like myself you aren't going to tolerate something that breaks after a month for the amount of money that you're paying for it. No, and like you said, you have that coat, and it's like that wonderful hard shell fabric, so it's kind of water repellent. It's tear resistant. Not tear proof, but tear resistant. Um, so it would suit a variety of jobs, climates, hobbies, activities, whatever, and it's going to be much more durable than a lot of your other options. On the waterfall end of things, get yourself a good set of waders. And honestly, I say get two sets of waders. You want to get a set that is great for warm weather in summer and then have a pair that, depending on where you're at, your feet aren't going to get cold in. I like to have the highest uh, grams of thinsulate. So, like, I think I've got one pair that's 1,600. Um, many of them only go to 800, but I look at it as even if I'm hunting where it's not that cold, if your feet are in water, they're always going to be cold. So get yourself a good pair of waders. We've used a lot of different brands. They seem to all be pretty good. Uh, they're all in that same price range. I know there's some some brands that are pushing $1,000 on their waders now, which I guess I couldn't, couldn't see spending that much. But at the same time, I know people that have these expensive waders, and I'll see where they're at in 10 years because I'll, I'll see if it actually does last because it seems like I'm getting roughly three to five years out of a set of waders. But find yourself a good set of waders so your feet are not cold. That is the key. 
but also have a pair for, for warmer weather so that you're not boiling yourself when it's 70 degrees out in your teal hunting. Oh gosh, teal season, several of your teal seasons were much warmer than 70s. They were 80s. Down south, it's what, 90s, 100s, I think, that one year? I still remember that year that uh, I took you to Louisiana. We were hunting with uh, <laughs> Kelly Hadel, and yes. at the boat launch, you told me that it was too cold yeah. in, in Louisiana, Venice, Louisiana, which is the, the, the end of the tip Farthest of land. this part in the state. And I looked at you and said, okay, well, the, the filming on the show is just not going to work. And you looked at me almost a little offended, and I said, <laughs> honey, it's 74 degrees. It's going to be 90 today. How are you cold? And yes... You were cold. I was cold, and it was about 70. Yep. Heated waders. That's what we would have needed. Like <laughs> Heated thermostatic waders and coat for you for when you're hunting in 80-degree weather. Mm-hmm. Ha, ha, ha. Very funny. So anyway, if you're thinking of getting your significant other or whoever in the family, your water follower, a pair, see what they already have. Um, if their pair is just plain old shot, maybe you're looking at a replacement pair. But like you said, if they have the kind that's good for, you know, really cold weather, maybe think about getting them a warm weather pair or vice versa. So that would be our buying tip for people as they're looking for the, the two-legged uh, hunter in the in the family. Next, I want to talk about a little bit about, I, I guess, relationship advice. I'm going to talk about how wonderful of a season I had and Kate and I I think can explain a little bit about how to keep both sides happy as you're one's hitting the field maybe one's staying home or both hitting the field but we'll have more about that coming up after this. I am going to be the first to admit that sometimes kennels are kind of unsightly in the house. My wife for years was telling me how we needed to find something that wasn't just a kennel, but a piece of furniture. She showed me DCT kennels a long time ago, and we finally got with them, and we have partnered with them as a sponsor for Sporting Dog Adventures. DCT kennels is more than a kennel. It's a piece of furniture. It is high quality, American made, and something you need as a focal point in your home. For more information, check out dctkennels.com. You will not be disappointed. Happy holidays from our sponsors at Trupanion, medical insurance for the life of your pet. With, your, with Trupanion's Breeder Support Program, breeders can gift their buyers a special offer of Trupanion policy coverage when they pick up their new puppies. If you're a breeder like me, it's a great way to give you and your buyers peace of mind. To learn more and sign up for Trupanion's free breeder support program, visit trupanion.com breeder and be sure to tell them that Sporting Dog Adventure sent you. Welcome back to the show. So it's the end of my hunting season. Uh, we are at the point where I've went so much that I got sick of getting up at 4 a.m., my wife pushed me to use our properties that we have a little more, saying that, you know, we have them and we absolutely should use them. And, and honestly, we, we use the quarry, the, the meat that we get uh, to feed our family year round. But I will say that my friends call my wife Katie Unicorn. They say she is one of a kind. I know that's not truth. But at the same time, I thought it'd be a good, a good topic to basically go over and, and just kind of give some advice for people in relationships, especially younger people, as you look at having stuff that your partner does that maybe you don't, or that you do together, or that you have something you do together, but separate. However you want to look at it, you have to have some leash so that you can do things you enjoy and then let your partner do the same. Yeah, we have a nice balance, I think, and I think that's really important in a relationship. And, you know, so you're the one who has the, the activity that basically takes you from home, and that is the hunting. But it could be, you know, maybe your wife's into fishing, or your wife's into um, horseback riding, or whatever it is. Maybe the other person has a hobby that takes them away from home, maybe quite a bit, maybe just a couple times a year, whatever it is, but... I am a firm believer in let them go. Let them go. Let them do their thing. Let them enjoy themselves. And I can tell you that 
the tighter you try to curtail that, the more you try to rein that in, it doesn't improve your relationship. It doesn't make that person want to be with you more. It doesn't make them want to love you more. It doesn't make them want to do more things together. It just makes them resentful. You end up with someone that's very bitter. And, yeah. and what ends up happening is you then have the other person going, well, if I couldn't do X, then you can't do Y. So it becomes more of a spite thing. And I've, I've watched it throughout my life where I've seen this and I'm like, my goodness, you know, whether it's going duck hunting for two weekends or deer hunting for a week, there's 51 other weeks in the year. And generally what you will see is they, there are things that they do as a family or that the wife wants or the husband wants and that they do, but then they're, they're unrelenting on letting the other spouse do what they want, which it, it is very destructive and, you know, Full, full disclosure, Kate and I are on our second and third marriage. So it, it is something that we've had marriages fail and we've looked at things and you look back at them and you think, my goodness, now that I'm in this marriage, I look back and yeah, I made some mistakes. And we've actually listened to some different uh, Christian podcasts that talked about how to have a healthy relationship. And a lot of it comes down to you need to let your partner enjoy their time that they choose. Mm -hmm. they, everybody needs their own me time, you know, their time to get away, to decompress, to relax, to just be themselves. Um, they need to have their own friends. They need to have their own interests. Um, and the thing about hunting and, you know, even other things like fishing or whatever, there is a very narrow window of enjoyment for people who are into those things. Um, it's not like certain other activities where you can do it at any time of the year or there's a much larger window, like maybe you're active in your kid's school. Well, school runs from roughly August to May or June. Well, that's terrific if you want your significant other to be involved in school. How about if they help out more after their season is over? There's many, many weeks, many, many months following, you know, whatever their season is where they can do those things. But try, you know, try to let that person, if they have a limited window to do their activity or hobby or sport, to give them all the chance that they can. I, I virtually roll him out of the house. I'm like, go. Did you go enough? Go again. Isn't there something to shoot this weekend, you know? Let them get all enjoyment in they can while they can because when the season is over, it's over. You know, there isn't another opportunity. So if you've got things you want to do, if it can wait, you know, concerts or dinners or volunteerism, if it can wait, let it wait. You know, if their hobby is one that is, you know, narrowly defined by time. And if you're the person that is going hunting, whether you're male or female, you need to also realize that you have to be fair about it. There's been times when I've come home and I, and I got asked, well, why are you home? I said, well, cause I was gone a lot. And you know what? I, I wanted to take you out to dinner. We still have to have a relationship. It can't all be one-sided. When I had the TV show, my goodness, it was pretty much all one-sided. I was gone for like probably 20 days a month. Now I'm probably gone oh, probably 15 days a month, but I don't do it straight through. I try to plan things for us, whether it's a date night or something else during my busy time. And then in the off season, which is most of the year, I, I try to basically push Kate to do what she wants to do. And whether that's uh, reading a book or picking uh, black raspberries, it's, it's finding stuff that she wants to do as well and trying to make sure that she has every opportunity to do what she wants. Yeah, I'm not suggesting, you know, self-sacrifice to the point of, like, it's all about the other person. No, of course not. Um, his hobby or activity is time dependent, so he has to go and hit the field when he has to hit the field. But then when he's not, like you said, which for him and for probably most people is the vast majority of the rest of the year, then yes, do things together or encourage that person to do whatever it is their hobby or their interest is. Uh, make sure that, you know, when you are home, now that you're home, you're not, you know, why why are you going out with your friends or why do you want to go back to school and take a class this semester or whatever. It is. Be supportive in their endeavors too. Make sure they have their fair chance for some me time as well. So that would be, I guess, our suggestion, our gift to you, which is, again, I've talked to my kids a lot about it, about having a good balanced relationship. I hope this helps you and gives you something to talk to your significant other about so that 
you can have a year that is filled with blessings and happiness and build towards something that maybe is more longstanding and will will stand the test of time. But I really hope this helped you a little bit. Kate, I want to thank you for stopping in on this episode. Again, some great ideas for buying guides. We'll probably try to do this a couple times a year. Hey, if you haven't, we have a new podcast called The Hunting Guy Podcast. It is just a general hunting podcast. Check that out. You can check it out on all the same platforms. And also, if you uh, if you can, please give us a thumbs up, five-star rating, share us on the platform, follow us, share it with your friends. Anything you, do, you can do that will help spread our love for dogs and our love for the outdoors with others. We want to thank you so much. I hope everyone has a great holiday season upcoming. Have a great week as well. Thank you again. God bless. Sporting Dog Adventure